I'm going to try to cover something today that's really hard and really divisive. It's not an easy subject, not at all. <clears throat> but I want to try to get it done as fast as I can and try not to forget anything. I want to talk about something that causes a lot of anger within the body of Christ. And that's the discussion of healing. We have all lost loved ones. And I just want to start with that. We have all lost loved ones who we prayed for for healing. And so we've come to the conclusion that it must have been God's will. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not even going to try to. I'm not even going to try there. I'm just not. It's, um, I've lost loved ones. I lost my dad to cancer when he was only about 71 years old. Don't like it. <clears throat> but if there's one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to back down. I'm going to keep trying. You see... There are two opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to Christianity. There's the extreme conservative end that does not believe in the laying on of hands and they will pray and ask people and ask God to have mercy and heal. Not saying that's wrong, not saying it's bad. I do it myself. <laughs> and then there's the extreme other end of the spectrum that believes if you just have faith if you just just have faith and they have a lot of a lot of scripture to back that up speak to the mountain and it will obey you if you do not doubt only believe and I've gone to churches I've been a part of, you know, I was a part of a church for several years that taught it is always God's will to heal. And I saw a lot of people healed there. A lot of people. I also saw a lot of people who weren't healed. During the street ministry that the Lord called me into a few years ago, I saw a lot of people healed out on the street. He allowed me to see a lot of miracle signs and wonders. I saw people get healed, miraculous healing. And it was awesome. It was great. Stick with me, please. A year, I'm just going to say a year and a half ago. It hasn't been that long, a little shorter. I had a heart attack. And I had to receive a stent at that point and wait a while, waited a year, and then actually got uh, a bypass surgery. Remember, I've seen a lot of people healed miraculously without having to go through surgery. But I wasn't healed. And then, just recently, <clears throat> my 11-year-old granddaughter um, they found a cancerous tumor on her femur, osteosarcoma, they call it. I call it Satan. And we prayed over her. We anointed her with oil, prayed over her the prayer of faith. And now she's doing chemo treatments. And it's sad. It sucks. It sucks. It's sad. It breaks our hearts to watch her just 
and yuck. She's just, it's not good. But I've seen a lot of people healed. A lot of people, I've seen people healed from cancer. Children, children cancer, uh, healed from cancer. But yet my granddaughter's going through it. So this is a hard subject. This is hard to, to take in. This is hard to deal with. And it's causing me to really think and ponder on what's the truth. So here's some of the things that I've, that I'm just going through my head. I'm not telling you how it is. I'm not telling you this is the way it is. I'm telling you this is what's going through my head. Is it God's will that every man be saved? Think about that. In one of the letters to Timothy, I think it's, I won't even say. I don't have it pulled up right now. I don't have it written down. In one of the letters that Paul wrote to Timothy, it says that we're supposed to pray um, for the governing leaders why? Because it is not God's desire, not his will, that any man perish, but that all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, is it God's will that every man be saved? I think he just said so. And just put it in there. <clears throat> now let's talk about healing for a minute. In Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about the discipline of the Lord. And discipline comes with discipleship. It's the same word. And it goes through talking about why there's discipline and that you are an illegitimate child if you aren't being disciplined by the Lord. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to look at that as what Jesus teaches in John 15 about pruning, <clears throat> pruning the branches, things like that. I'm pretty sure it's John 15. I don't have my Bible with me. But I want you to see in Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 12, hear, hear this, please. It says, therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down. I have a piece of paper printed on the ground sitting here in front of me. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. That's the will of God. Strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Make straight paths for your feet. so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. That's the will of God. When you read about children in the Bible, as I read through the teachings of Christ, I see the perfect will of God who walked on the earth, the expressed image of of the Father walking on the earth and healing children, healing all who came to him, everyone who came to him, he healed them. And then I think about the scripture as Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray. One of the things he says is, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I know I only said a little portion of that sentence, but I don't think anything else needs to be said. I think God wants his will done on earth just as it is in heaven. And for Jesus to even teach us to, to pray that way, we uh, maybe should consider the fact that that's what God's will is. The gnats are out, they came out today. So is it 
God's will to heal? I'm going to say, I believe yes. Is it God's will to save? I'm going to say, I believe yes. Are we going to see everyone healed? No. Are we going to see everyone saved? No. Some of the greatest pastors and preachers and church leaders have lost their own family members, their own wives, those who see a lot of healing. But my granddaughter's sick. And she's going to be okay, I believe, with all my heart. She's going to be fine. But I want us to look at that scripture again in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, where it tells us that we should be healed. We should be healed. We should pursue that. Um... I can't remember exactly where it is. It might be 3rd John or it might be in Jude. It talks about that he prays that we would be, uh, that we would prosper even as our soul prospers and be in good health. It's the will of God, I think. And at the same time, there's 2 Corinthians chapter 1, right in the beginning of that chapter, I think it's verse 3, somewhere in that area. And it says that when we have gone through certain, we'll call them trials, and we've been healed from those trials, that when we see others that have gone through what we, or that are going through what we have gone through, that we should extend that same grace that we've received, that we should, because we can identify with the person who is going through that tough time in their life, because we've been there, we've been there. You know, it's like, uh, <clears throat> you're not going to make a very good marriage counselor if you haven't been married for a long time and gone through the quarrels, the trials, and things that happen when you're married. You're not going to be a good marriage counselor until you've been married for a while. You're not going to be a good uh, teacher for parenting until you have kids and you deal with all that comes in that, with that. You're just not. You have to go through things. And so... Here I am, someone who has seen multiple people healed, hundreds. I have a heart, I had, you know, I had a heart attack and I have uh, cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis. So what did I do? I researched it. I sought it out. I, I, I pursued everything I could learn about it. And now I do videos here on my YouTube channel, Simple Life with Rob Fusateri, videos on how not to have a heart attack, how to live a life that is simple and satisfying so that you don't get atherosclerosis. And if you've already have it, if you have uh, hardening of the arteries and uh, the, the, your arteries closing in, um, you can follow some of these simple principles by living a simple life and a simple diet, a simple life change. And I'm going to keep teaching those things. I'll put out another video here in a couple days on the things that I've learned and what I do to keep healthy so that I can continue living simple. Um, and I hope that, that other people won't have a heart attack in their 50s like I did. <laughs> And now my little grandbaby, who's 11 years old, dealing with the nastiness of chemotherapy and the sickness that it brings on, all the nausea and just all the yuck that comes with it. And my 
my family having to watch her and, and, and nurse her um, and try to help. And, you know, we're, we're taking care of her brother and sister a lot. Um, we're watching her parents brokenhearted because they're watching their little girl um, just laying there crying and vomiting. and It's disgusting. It's horrible. But we can see the future. We can see the future and what it holds, I believe, where my little 11-year-old granddaughter is going to be able to identify with children who have to go through what she's going through at this present time, she'll get past it. She will be healed. I'm, I'm confident of that. She will be healed. And then probably have a lifelong ministry in comforting the, um, the other, you know, the children as time goes on. And quite frankly, I'm excited about that. I have people telling me that the videos that I post on Facebook and here on YouTube are helping them, helping them to they're, they're helping them to decide to actually get healthy, um, to stop eating all the the trash food, the fast food, the simple carbohydrates, the stuff on the that are high on the glycemic index and things like that. I have people coming up to me and telling me that it's really helping them. And so if you ask me, if I, am I glad that I had the heart attack um, and that I wasn't miraculously healed? Now, I'm not going to say I wasn't miraculously healed because God definitely had his hand in that. He had a lot of favor on me. Not many people get to have two 100% clogged arteries, one of them being the uh, what they call the widow maker. Not many people get to have a heart attack and live through it. And the Lord let me. <clears throat> probably because he knew I wouldn't stop running my mouth about it. And then I wouldn't just sit by and be passive and let, let it destroy my life. Because that's not me. It's not who I am. I'm not wired to be passive. That's why I have issues. I've had so many issues with, with the church. Um, the church that I go to, we've, we have been round and round about this whole healing issue. And the, uh, the miraculous healing of God through the laying on of hands of his children. I have brought it up quite a few times to several leaders. And so I'm going to say, I personally, I'm in the middle. Do I believe in the miraculous healing of God through the laying on of hands? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's in scripture. It's in scripture a lot. And I've seen it in person. I've experienced it. I've been a part of it. Do I believe it's God's will to miraculously heal every time? At this point in my life, I don't. Do I believe it's God's will that I'll be healed? I do. That'll make you scratch your head for a little while. <clears throat> to those of us who have lost loved ones, I can't, I can't explain why a young, a young child would pass away and that a parent would have to bury their, their precious child. It breaks my heart. Just breaks my heart. It's, it's just not right. And I, and I don't think, I don't think we're doing enough to fight against the powers of darkness on that one. I think we, we should be learning more. We should be digging in deeper, diving in deeper and, and going after that. I, I believe there's a lot of things, a lot of, uh, authority and things like that that the Lord has given us that we are unaware of. So I'm not going to sit back and be passive. 
I'm going to dig deeper. And I'm going to believe it's God's will to heal. Because if I don't believe it's his will to heal, what's that going to do to my prayers when I'm, heal when I'm praying for healing for somebody? It's going to make them null and void if you doubt that it's God's will for the thing that you're healing or that you're praying about. <clears throat> chances are they're going to bounce off the ceiling. But if that person isn't miraculously healed, I'm going to keep praying for them and keep praying for them and keep discussing with them the importance of pressing in, pressing in and going after that healing so that they can help people with the grace that they have received. Don't just sit back and let it happen. Don't be passive about it. Don't just die. That's... I just don't think that's right. I don't think that's our calling. Now, with all that in mind, I just want to... One scripture that's popping into my head right now. It's in the Psalms. I don't know where it is. <clears throat> but it says uh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints so there are people who are going to pass away and it is precious in the sight of the Lord and we have no jurisdiction in that that's that's, that's the Lord's doing I think uh in the book of Acts, Stephen was a young man and he died a martyr. Not much you're going to do about that. And also, uh, there's a scripture that says that uh, if I can put it in the right wording, there's an appointed time for a man to die. You're not going to change that. It's already been written. It's already finished. The Lord has already decided. But at the same time, are there people who die before their time? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't, I don't believe God's will is always done. Otherwise, everyone would be saved. <clears throat> everyone would be saved. The scripture's clear. Not everyone's going to be saved. In fact, the majority of the people on this earth will not, sadly. Is that God's desire? No, it's not. So I'm going to keep praying for my granddaughter and I'm praying that before this, the end of this year is up, she will have no more cancer. She will be strong. Her hair will be growing back and she'll be playing again this time next year. She'll be doing cartwheels again. I believe that with all my heart and I believe she'll be a worship leader one day. But she's got to go through this and she's already encountered God when she was getting her MRI a few weeks ago going in the MRI machine she told my daughter that when my daughter held her hand she was um, it, she said it felt weird it felt bigger it felt like daddy's hand and she said when she went into to into the machine for the MRI that she still felt in her hand that that man's hand felt like daddy's hand holding her the whole time may I suggest that it was her daddy's hand 
not her physical natural daddy, her spiritual daddy. God's got her. He's holding her hand and he's teaching all of us through this. If I offended anybody in, in any way, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm just sharing with you my thoughts. I don't lay down. I'm not passive. I want to get to the bottom of things. Um, when it comes to the, the cancer that um, my granddaughter's fighting, I'm going to do uh, my best and my daughter's going to do her best and we're going to pursue how she how she got that that cancer why why is her you know why is what 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 is osteosarcoma and why why did she get it i'm going to start talking to other other parents who have had to deal with this and had to go through it and uh we're going to get to the bottom of it to find out what caused it because i don't think it's something that just comes naturally i don't believe that and i don't believe it's just some kind of genetic thing I'll stop there. But we're going to pursue it so that we can help other families not have to go through this. We're going to pursue it so that other children who are going through it can be comforted and other parents who are going through it can be comforted. Just the same as those who are eating the way that I used to eat and dealing with stress or living a life stress stressful life the way that I lived for years I mean, we can get the message out to them as well that's what this that's what this YouTube channel is all about so I'm gonna asking I'm asking that you please like this video share it comment on it um, and, and just, you know, share, share your thoughts, share your thoughts, show me scriptures, show me a scripture that says that we're supposed to just get sick and die. I can't find it. I just can't find it. And yeah, Paul left, um, well, I can think of the, as the word Miletus. Uh, maybe it was him, I don't know. Paul left left one of the disciples in a certain area, and they were sick. It's life. It's what happens. Even the Apostle Paul wasn't able to, to pray over every single person and have them healed. But he did pray over a bunch, and they were healed, and he even raised the dead. So he wasn't batting 100%, batting 99. I'd be happy to bat 50. So I'm not going to keep rambling. But I am going to ask that you don't give up. Press in. Don't just be passive and sit back and die. Go after this thing. Learn from it. Grow in endurance. That's what I'm doing. Grow in endurance. Grow in patience. Grow in love. And pursue what the Lord has for you. It's a great calling. You have an amazing calling. And I know I want to, when I get to heaven, I'm with all my heart, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't want to just sit back and be passive and die. So I'm going to stop sharing there, but God bless you all. I, I Again, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, comment, and all that fun stuff so that um, so this video goes out, goes viral. Thank you.